Welcome to Robust Roof Tanks. I'm Ash, and today we're going to be putting together this sump. Let's get right into this. does is it helps keep your water parameters safe and it will kind of keep the water itself the nutrients in it last longer so if you have a sump you don't have to do water changes quite as often and it's not that big of a deal if you go um if you miss one day when you're gonna do it so that's why i'm gonna have a sump because i might be traveling this summer so i need my tank build go a little bit of time without water changes so that's why i'm putting mine in but Basically, what you put in the sump is your filter stuff, maybe a big skimmer. I'll also be putting in a, a carbon reactor, which I made also. I'll leave a link to that. And I did make this body for the sump, so I'll put a link in that in the description below too. But anyway, enough about that. You're going to have your filter stuff in there. The next one is going to be all your live stuff. You're going to have your macroalgae, your copepods, phytoplankton, beneficial bacteria. Then after that, you'll have the pump that sends it back up to the tank. So I've already got this sump body right here. What I'm going to do today is set it up and let it cycle the tank. Let's get into this. Okay, so I'm going to start by filling up my sump. Start by putting my filter stuff in the first compartment. Here's the carbon reactor. And here's the protein skimmer. They are going to float right now just because there's no water in there, but don't worry. That'll fix once we get this all cycling. Let's get to connect the air back here. So I filled the tank up. I'm going to go ahead and connect one of the air, uh, the water pumps to go ahead and connect it down to here with my filters because I already put them in there to the skimmer and the carpet reactor. So, the one I got is just a little simple one. So, you can adjust it with this little dial. And then, so it sucks in through here, shoots it up here. Basically, you want it close to the bottom so that it's not just cycling from the top of the tank, but you don't want it too close to the corals either, so it doesn't take up that much room. Okay, and here I've got my little tubing. So, I'm going to go ahead So that is now connected down to my carbon reactor and my skimmer and everything is hooked up, you can see. Okay, so that compartment is done with all my filter stuff. There's my skimmer and my carbon reactor back here. So from there, it'll overflow into this next one, which that is my refugium. So what I put in there first is the base is you need something for the bacteria so that it can stay in there and keep living in there. So you want something with a high surface area. You can buy stuff called Marine Pure Block, but that's just really expensive. And to get the aquarium you're really wanting, you don't need the best, you just need something good. So that's why I've got this. I'm actually going to rinse it real quick, and then I'll be back. So here I've got my rocks. I already rinsed them. These are special. They actually weren't necessarily for um, salt aquariums, but it did say that they could be used for that. What's great about them is just their high surface area, like I was talking about before. 
So you don't have to go and get the expensive stuff like Marine Pure. Sure, if you have the budget, then sure, go and get that. But get that aquarium you're wanting that looks amazing. You don't need the best. You just need good. I'm just going to toss this in there. You don't need the bottom to be covered, but you do want a significant amount of it covered. So, as long as it's like that, it's fine. A little closer in the back, you can't really see. Okay, so next, what you need is some living nitrifying bacteria. Got some by Fluval, it's called um, biological enhancer. It's used to cycle your, cycle your tank. It's got a bunch of different types of beneficial bacteria in here. So you're just gonna take some of this, pour it in there. Just like that. And just to keep the culture going, um, every few days you can pour in a little bit more just to get it started. But for now, that's fine. Okay, and I'm gonna go and get my phytoplankton and copepods. Okay, so here I've got my live phytoplankton. It's by Alp Bloom. You wanna make sure to always keep this in your fridge. And then every couple days, just go ahead and shake it. Okay. It's a nice little, nice little squirt on the bottom. This is important because it'll help Price the bottom of your food chain. It's what the cocoa pods will eat. So I'm just going to give one cap full of this. Then you can go ahead and add this every once in a while. Okay, next, here I've got my cocoa pods. They're in a container. These you also want to keep in the fridge if you're not putting them in the tank yet. They're really tiny. I'm not going to pour all of this in because I'm going to start my own culture, which I'll make a video on later. So I'm just going to put this in the side. There's my refugium. The last thing I'm gonna put in is my macroalgae. What I've got is two little bits of chatomorphic algae, also just known as chato. Here's a closer look. This green just looks like a little bit of weed goes in there. And then just to get that growing, I've got a little light that actually fits nicely under my tank. foggy in there, as you might see. But that's like just to get the algae growing. Okay, let's see. Here I've got my other pump, and then the tube to take it back up. So the pump, I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to show it first. It's just starts in here.
Okay, so there we got that. And then this is going to go back up. It's my working. So that's how you put together a sump. Um, I will tell you that it took me a little bit to get the flow right um, as far as the two pumps go. Because you can't just turn them to the same level as one is working with and one's working against gravity. So just make sure you, today that you're staying at home and you have time to observe it. Because even just a little bit more of each one, of one of the two, can make the tank eventually overflow if you're not keeping an eye on it. So. Definitely keep an eye on that, because, well, one day I left it on and my room actually flooded, and we'll leave a picture right here. That was not fun. I was in here drying everything. But, anyway, so, just my caution about that. Do not want to clean up your room like I did. But I hope you found this video helpful. Um, sumps are great for tanks, because it helps keep it stable, and that's key in reefing, stability. Anyway, if you liked this video, then please like and share. If you want to see more by us, subscribe down below. Thanks for watching.